At the tail end of 1991, there was a renewed flurry of popular interest in the assassination story predicated on the release of the Oliver Stone movie JFK. Mr. Nix's granddaughter, Gail Nix Jackson, appeared on several television programs at the time telling of her grandfather's experience. In conjunction with the much-believed popular theory that a shooter had fired from the top of the Knoll area, the granddaughter reiterated that the Nix film is the only film which exhibited the entire grassy Knoll area. Emphasizing that if there is something in this film that reveals a second gunman, she told one interviewer, let's find the truth and let it be known and let our lives go on. Claiming that the government kept the original film and still refuses to make it available to her, Mrs. Jackson also said that her grandfather believed that the government altered the footage and the copy returned to him, though she simply doesn't know the truth. On a late November 1991 edition of the Geraldo TV talk show, Mrs. Jackson told the host that it was her personal opinion that the original film showed something that the government didn't want people to see. Also on the guest panel was Robert Groden, photographic researcher who had advised the House Select Committee photo panel and frequent lecturer who holds strong beliefs of an assassination conspiracy. Displaying a good quality Nix film sequence with extreme blow-ups, freeze frames, and repetitive loop action, Groden told of his discovery 12 years earlier of the movement behind the concrete retaining wall next to the steps. He stated that he informed the select committee about this figure one can see in motion behind the wall. So if this is a gunman behind the retaining wall, as Mr. Groden is alluding to, that makes two gunmen in the grassy knoll area, because for sure Mr. Groden thinks there was a gunman behind the picket fence. Now folks, stop and think. What kind of assassination squad is this? They send two men into a public area with high-powered rifles, and innocent spectators are standing yards away, sometimes feet away, and they're going to take shots at the president in this kind of scenario? <laughs> Mrs. Jackson obviously impressed and commenting that today is the first time she had seen this feature, interrupts to say that she doesn't know if it is some guy throwing hot dogs, but it is definitely something. The multi-repeated loop of the blow-up does show two or three light areas in motion, one light area descending rapidly during part of the sequence, and all obviously not merely photographic artifacts.
The implication given to those seeing this film so displayed is that this is movement. The movement must be a human, and the human movement must be that of an assassin. The logicality of such reasoning, though attractive, is unfounded. If it is in fact human movement, why could it not be more logically another of the numerous spectators at the scene? Must every unknown shape or movement be construed as that of an assassin? If a mundane explanation is a plausible explanation, is it not intellectually more justified to seek out those explanations before jumping to the conclusion of more bogeymen being present? The little-known comment of Marilyn Sitzman, the woman who stood on the pedestal a short distance to camera right of this site with Abraham Zapruder while he filmed the assassination, is important here. Sitzman recalled distinctly that a young black couple between 18 and 21 years of age were sitting on a bench only several feet behind this concrete wall in question. She remembered that right after the last shot, the kids had thrown down their Coke bottles, just thrown them down, and just started running towards the back. Though not as satisfying or as sensational an explanation for this possible event, this explanation does jibe with actual observed actions of the people at the scene.